Father, have your way. Speak to the inner recesses of our hearts. Minister to our spirit man. Stir up our spirit to prayer. Dear Lord, empower our prayers. Empower our prayers. Lord, empower our prayers. Let mountains collapse. Let them sink. Let closed doors open. Let walls of hindrances destroyed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You can be seated in God's presence. I am opening a message in an area uh, I have not been teaching for quite some time. And I've titled the message, Operation Clear Your Foundation. Brother, listen, when we talk about foundation, we are talking about basics. We are talking about beginning. And I want all of us to pay attention because I don't care what you, they have preached to you. I don't care the doctrine. I don't even care the number of color and how many ordinations the person that preached to you had. But I'm telling you a fact that nobody escapes. It doesn't matter how many titles he has. And that is this thing called foundation. And that's why it's making a mockery of a lot of Christians. So many Christians have prayed. They have done paid tithe. They have sowed seed and fasted. Listen to me. The foundational spirits can frustrate a man and can dis disgrace a Christian. I'm telling you. And I want you to understand, for some people, because of where they come from, it is not a prayer of one day, neither is it a prayer of two weeks. These are powers. Powers that have been there for years. Some of them, powers that have drank so much blood. Did you hear what I said? And because they have drank so much blood, they brought so much wickedness and cloud of darkness that if you are not even convinced from your heart that you need to pray about it, you may not even scratch it very well. And I tell you, I have seen this thing over the years, by the grace of God, not less than 38 years now. I have watched this thing, real people. I went through it myself. Amen? So, I want also to deal with it, but I want our eyes to be open. Today is part one, because it, I cannot be able to tidy up what we need to know. Otherwise, we will not be able to pray. So, I will just open up the introduction. We pray. Tomorrow, Sunday, we address it again. The main things. Amen. 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 Now, let me tell you. One of my spiritual fathers says something. And I, I have never gambled with it. One of the ministers in deliverance. I, we have not been too close, but I read a lot of his books in deliverance when we started. They were earlier fathers. Uh, Bishop Chibundo, he's in Benin. He said, if you don't know where you are coming from, you don't know where you are. Where you are going is not properly clear. And that's a powerful statement. I, and that's what we are talking about. If you don't find your foundation, you see some Christian, who is your father? He said, I doesn't know his father. Grandfather, I said, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. listen to me. You must know your history. Otherwise, you repeat history. Did I communicate? Yes, you need to know your history. You need to go and investigate. It is not wise that you are careless about the knowledge about your foundation. Foundation speaks about beginning. Let me illustrate. We have a lot of engineers here. An engineer goes to, have you ever watched when they want to start a house? They fortify. They go down. And when they go down, they pour concrete, stones, to do what? To fortify the foundation. Because even God, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, that a man laid his foundation on a stone. And when the wind came, blew the foundation. What happened? Nothing happened. He said, but there was another one, foolish. He laid a foundation, but on sand. He said, when the wind came, he carried it away. Look at the two similarity. Wind blew on all of them. The one that survived was the one that had a, good, a solid foundation. Unfortunately, 
Many of us are coming from wrong foundation. The Bible says that Abraham got up one day. I think that is the book of Hebrew chapter 1. And the Bible says he decided to go and see a city, verse 10, that whose maker is what? God. Whose foundation was laid by God. And now listen, number one, that tells us that even cities have foundation. Families have foundation. You, as an individual, you have a foundation. Marriages have foundation. And the way my, my foundation will be laid is going to speak on that fam, fam, family. Ministry has foundation. I can, if I talk to you, when I speak to ministers, I talk to them about foundation, the way they lay the foundation of their ministry. It haunts many of them till today. Some of them that had to break people's hearts to lay the foundation. Don't you see that that foundation is faulty? Am I talking to somebody here? Now, in the same way, Abraham sought for it. But the Bible, the Bible makes us to understand. What I want you to understand is that God laid the foundation, yes. But the foundation somewhere in the book of Psalm 85, verse uh, 5. The Bible says, all the foundations are out of course. So the question is, what happened? Can I tell you, there is a foundation you will be in and you will not be blessed. I was talking about, what do you call it? About the family. About, sorry, about the building. Now, I give you an example. Somewhere not far in this, from here, a house, a foundation of a three-story building was laid. And when they finished the foundation of this three-story building, what, because it was built by contract, an engineer was paid, and he went and cleared the place and started building. In those days, people had money. So you just give him the plan, and you cost it. He went to build. Now, when he got there, there was a pit. The engineer didn't want to waste so much money because they have already agreed on price and he wants to make gain. So what did he do? He quickly filled the, filled the, uh, the pit and built. And that particular pit, if you meet engineers, when there is such a pit, it is usually differently addressed. Impossible. They have to fortify that place, knowing that it will sink. This man built three-story building. After a long time, that pit sank. The house has been finished. People are packed in. It has been painted. People are already living there. Suddenly, the house starting sank. It nearly sank. That is a fault. But the building cracked to the last floor. In the same way, so many people's lives have been built on wrong foundation. No matter what you put on top, on top it doesn't matter how you go. I was listening to a tape yesterday. A particular family, they had about four men. The first son, PhD. He has, he said, the building has been built. But even though he's a PhD, listen to me, he teaches an empty class that have no human beings. Foundation. And then I also listened to the tape. He said, the other son, that one, he called himself Bishop. He preaches to an open hall without human being. All the four, none of them is normal. Why? foundational causes. So, if you are a Christian and you think you glouse over the issue of your foundation, listen to me, you are pre prepared for frustration in life. There are matters you address and readdress and address because these things are in layers. Did you hear what I said? They are in layers. Where I built my house in the village, the, the elders said that my, my great-grandfather was living there. And the spirits told him that he was, he was occupying their, 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 their roots. And he was asked to move. That's why you have been in my father's compound. I'm talking to you, Doc. So that's why the compound is very long. They had to shift back to clear for the spirits. And being an only son, my father is lost. They took my own inheritance. When there was, you know, challenges, they gave me that place so that I would go and face the spirits. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I went there. Listen to me. The house I have here took me less than two years to finish. That house, I built it for 14 years. Because it was war. The engineer who has been building and for years that handled that house, out of five beams, that five beams you look at there, the P, the pillar, sorry, five, uh, what do you call that one? Pillars. 
the beam rested on two a mystery and the man finished building you know, he kept building and finished and we had already put the scaffold for roofing when the trouble started so when you look at those pillars now they are as big as that that was because some other engineers after prayers were called and then they had to rearrange we had to rearrange additional pillars to go and meet them is somebody hearing me here once an error occurs at the foundation, listen to me, it will affect the whole structure. And the best thing is to address it. And how do you address the foundation? You go to the foundation. That, that building that collapsed, that uh, cracked, are, either the people will pack out of that house or you pull down the building or they will go back to the foundation, dig down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Crack everything and now they will have to cast in order to link the two sides and also address that particular uh, hole that was not properly filled. What am I saying? Every, all of us must be humble enough to go to our foundation. Did I communicate now? God called Abraham. In case you don't know, these are powers that conquered men, great ministers. Is it Abraham? He dealt with him. Do you know that for many years he was buried? All his generations. Are you aware that all his children and grandchildren, they all have problems with child baths? I'm telling you how foundations work. Is it mentioned? Is it Moses? He struggled with anger. That is another one whole day message. Foundation. Why? Simon. My, yeah, listen. He said their current is in their hand. He said, cause be their anger. I will scatter them in Israel. And his grandfather, Moses' father, was also a man of very hot temper. And he transferred it. These are bloodline problems, faults, causes. Am I communicating? Are we sitting together? So we are talking about foundation. Foundation. How about David. Even the morality he transferred to Solomon. He went there and built his cathedral inside Solomon. It affected all his, most of his sons. The other one slept with his sister. The other one slept with his father's wives. Listen to me. You don't argue against evidence. Did I communicate? When you see people who have never had an encounter with God, have not had an experience, and they just read one verse, they begin to talk, you know, as if, uh, he that is a Christ he is a new creature all things have passed away tell him that I said he does this you got to read his book again read Bible when you inherit a man simple you inherit his what? his liabilities you inherit his assets you inherit his liabilities you take care of his debts and listen to me these are spiritual debts one man wrote we are, this, we are dealing with grandfather's bill our fathers and forefathers ate in Satan's hotel and we are being invited to pay their bills. You didn't hear what I said now. They ate at Okuku, at Kamano, at Hinjoko, at uh, Habagro, at Ufetoko. Uh, I, I think somebody is hearing me. At Itofe in River Niger. And you are unexpected to come and do what? Pay their bills. I think it was in a hotel. It's in my, one of my books. Uh, 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 dealing with a holy foundation. If you read that book properly, I mentioned there about a man. He was entering a hotel in, um, where is this hotel? I'm forgetting the hotel. And the man said, as he was coming to the hotel, he went to the bulletin and saw, written on the, on the bulletin, eat whatever you like, but your grandchildren will pay for it. Grandfather's bill. And then he gave a space with a special icon and he said, when you finish eating, you will receive a bill that says, you, what is that? You are not paying for what you ate now, but you are paying for the one your fathers ate. Message has finished you. Is that not the, the, the summary of what all we are saying? Hello? Are you aware? That God, if you look at the statement God told Abraham very well and meditate on the, where Abraham was coming from. Number one, Abraham 
was coming from a very hedonic, idolatrous family. Don't allow what the gospel of the hidden to confuse your life. Don't allow their gospels to confuse your life. Abraham came from the awe of the Chaldees. Assyria. Assyrians are very wicked. Go and read the history. So wicked that when they conquer a nation, they were very bloody people. When they conquer a nation, they cut off their head, their necks of the men, hang it upon the neck of their wife, and parade them around the city to show them that they are conquered. Very wicked. That is why when God asked his prophet, his prophet uh, Jonah, go and tell Nineveh that their time of judgment have come. Jonah refused to obey God. Why? Jonah was angry. Such, a wicked, such wicked people, you are interested in them. Kill them. Wipe them away. I know you. When I go there and preach, you say you are forgiving them because God's mercy is terrible. So that, that's why Jonah did not want to obey his God. Are you understanding me now? Because why? They were bloody. And that's where Abraham comes from. And if you study it from that and look at what happened to Abraham, you understand what happens in families where there is bloodshed. And so, eventually, this is where God brought Abraham and he said to him, come out from your country to a land I will bless you. What is God saying? This place you are, I cannot bless you here. There are places you will be and you will not be blessed. So the best thing is to pray prayers I call separational prayers. I'm not saying you deny your family or kindred, no. But you see, spiritually, you have to come out. I am a representative of the government of heaven in my father's compound. I am not of that compound, even though I'm in that compound. I thought somebody is hearing me. So there is a place you can be and you will not be blessed. So having said these things as introduction, let us go to foundation. Number one, the book of Psalm 11, verse 3. Very powerful statement from the psalmist. He said, if the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing a righteous man can do. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? It's a question. And the question there is simple. The thing you will do is to rebuild the foundation. In the book of Isaiah, the Bible tells us that we are called, we are called to rebuild desolate foundations of many generations. So, there are generational desolation. There are what? Generational what? Desolation. And the Bible has called me and you, having known Jesus Christ. Now that Jesus has gone to the cross, there is an atoning blood. We are called to rebuild the desolate foundation of many generations. Are we still together? Some foundations are good. Some are terrible. Some are terrible. And like I said, you must pay attention at how was the foundation of my life laid. You must pay attention to how was your, the foundation of your life laid. Because can I tell you, you have a personal foundation. I give you very quick examples very quickly so that I can go to another one. Take for instance, how was the foundation of your life laid? Some of you, your father looked for a child, for a child and looked for a child. And like one sister, she was a, every day we were conducting deliverance of her. And on one day I had to ask God to review what went. And then she went and asked the mother, based on what we saw. At the end of the day, we discovered that the mother and the father were married for years and there was no child. The mother told her. And one day, they sent the advisor to go and visit a prayer house prophet, all these uh, uh, prayer house prophets. And then when she went, the man took her to the river in the night, did some rituals in the night. And according to her, when that ritual was finished, the woman said, they, they warned her, start going home and never look backward. The woman said as she was going home, she was seeing a toyish little child following her from her peripheral vision, but she was warned not to look back. She came back home, got pregnant, and got our sister. And you think this kind of person, when she come to the altar, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I, 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 be my Lord and my Savior. And you think that this deliverance is over. 
No, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your, family, your salvation with fear and trembling. It has to be worked out, brother. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Number two, how was the foundation of your marriage laid? Some people, they, they laid the foundation of their marriage on the seed. Some others, there were charms. The woman was charmed. Some, the man was charmed. Is somebody hearing me here? If you insist, I give you, I have examples. This is something we've been doing for years, 30 something years now. I met a lady, very powerful. I won't call, I won't describe so much, so forgive me. She's, she may be listening to what I'm saying. Well educated, one of our brightest brain in this part of the world. But this woman said two of the children are vegetables. The best two are what? vegetables. Why? During those days, women were not going to school. So she finished. Her classmates, she went to school. Her classmates were getting married and we are having children. By the time she finished graduating and coming back, it looked as if all her mates were married and she was not married. And they began to put pressure on her as if she would not get married. So, hurriedly, she was compelled to go and visit a woman, a marine uh, priestess, which we call here is the one. And the woman did some ritual for her. And according to her, the woman said to her, your husband is come. Look at your husband. Come, let's, uh, you can go. You, are, you get married now. And as they were going, the woman told me, I'm not saying somebody informed me. As she was going, and the woman escorted her. And they told her, uh, bidded her bye bye. Turned and said, but we will take the best two. Her comment, she said, the woman said, but we will take the best too. As she was bidding her farewell. She said she had it. But why she didn't turn and ask her, what do you mean? By we will take the best too. She didn't do that. And what happened? The two children are vegetables. Vegetables. At 16, 18 years, she still changes their napkin. She still takes care of their part every month. Problem. Why? Foundation. Do those children know what happened to their life? Some people will tell you what they don't know, don't know you, not lie. You are, you are better go and read your Bible. You are not well. What you don't know can know you very well. What happened to the children of Abraham? Do they know? Did Moses start the trouble of the anger? Was he not Levi? I'm asking. Even the covenant speaking in the life of the children of Israel. Is it their own? Many of them there today are idolaters. Is the covenant between God and Abraham and Jacob? Is somebody hearing me here? I don't know. We have a lot of people give, throwing out all kinds of doctrines, flying in the air. And they confuse people with it. Read the Bible. In the book of 2 uh, uh, second, uh, second, second Samuel, chapter 21, verse 1, the Bible says, Abraham, Moses, Sorry, David, uh, Samuel, King Samuel was on the throne. No, after Samuel left this throne, David came and sat. And the Bible said, there was famine in the land three years, year after year. And then uh, David went to God, Father, why is there famine in the land? And when David asked, God said, it is because of King Saul, the man who sat before. He said, he lived... Some of you, your forefathers lived 70, 80, 90, something years. Go to the family today. You can't see a man 65. Is somebody hearing me here? And the Bible says, it is because of Saul and his bloody house. Saul killed the Gibbonai. And the judgment came during the time of Saul. At the time of David. Let's leave all this argument. The word of God stands sure. It can be changed. It's a matter about study and interpretation. Are we still together? Now, have you ever asked how was the foundation of your business laid? That's important. If you don't pay attention, pay attention. The same question goes to your education. It goes to your Christianity. Can I inform you also? The person who laid the, your foundation of your Christianity matters. Whenever I see people coming from deeper life background, I know. 
When I see people coming from full gospel, liberal gospel, full gospel is more liberal than deeper life. I know. Scripture union, I know. Even from their head time, you will know a deeper life person. And when you see somebody coming from a Christ embassy, you will know. He will quote all the scriptures and yet wear trousers and keep his head open. I, go, I won't go there. Is somebody hearing me here? So, listen to me. Our, fam, our foundation speaks. It doesn't matter whether you, are, you speak in tongue two hours. It doesn't have, it has no meaning. Foundation speak. Even ministers, a man of God, how did he lay the foundation? Fraud. Fraud. And he, speak, he was speaking in tongue. Powerful church. He may be hearing what I'm saying, but it's good he goes to repent. The, the general overseer was having, was having child problem. He had a, he, with the wife. They couldn't give birth. And the woman was having problems. Sometimes she would have miscarriage severally. And after many years, this woman got pregnant. And after she got pregnant, the doctor said, because of her age and all that and that, she will be confined to the hospital. She wouldn't need to be moving around too much. And the woman obeyed and stayed. And because this husband and wife are too close, you know, there are husband and wife that are Aquila and Priscilla. Wherever you see the man, look around, you see the wife. Huh? So when you look around, you do what? You see the wife. They are, that's what the Bible calls Priscilla, Priscilla and who? Aquila marriage. Beautiful. But listen to me. This particular man went to stay in the hospital with the wife throughout the time. And that gave the fraudulent deputy GO, GO an opportunity to buy into the heart of the members of the council of the church. And before you know it, by the time the wife delivered, unfortunate for them, the day the woman delivered, she was still on blood. They brought a letter to the husband telling her that the council had met and that they decided that he will no more lead them, that the deputy has been doing very well and they, are now as they have decided that he take over the church to move the work of God forward. Oyibo. And then eventually, they gave this man the letter. The wife has been brought out from the theater. She's in the room, board, board now, looking at the child, happy, excited at last, I'm a mother. They expecting the husband to be happy. Doc, are you still with me? Uh-huh. Expecting the husband to be what? And the man was not smiling. And so the woman got worried, began to ask him, what's going on? What happened? You are supposed to be happy. After all these years, after some pressures, the man threw the letter to her. She read that letter. Tears ran down her eyes. And she said, looked up and said, oh God, after all our suffering, after all the price we prayed, he said, these men, will never have a child cry in their house. Be general overseer, a mover of signs and wonders. But he has laid a, far, a bad foundation. No child. Anybody that believes in them, no child. If the person had a child and packed in and became the assistant pastor, the wife stops giving birth because of the curse of a woman that was in pain, that was bleeding, out of soul anguish. That's why the Bible wants. We should mind that where we live. Follow peace with all men. Do all that lie with you to live peaceably with all men. Don't leave. Listen, we have been given liberty. The Bible said, don't use your liberty anyhow. Am I talking to somebody here? So, brethren, foundation speaks. Don't lay a horrible foundation that you will not, look, you will not take. I'm still justifying the issue of foundation. That's why I said I'm laying foundation. Look up this way. See this thing. This is flower. This is the stem. And then this is the root. These flowers can never deny that what made them came from here. Did I communicate? Are you see? Are we still together? So stop all these arguments. In fact, let me tell you, when you look into your life very well, if you don't see your father and this year, your mother, you are a, ba you are a bastard. 
We need to find out. That's why there is trouble about DNA. Because if DNA come here, there will be trouble. If DNA machine enter here, I was reading a cartoon in the WhatsApp. I'm sure some of you read it. A woman did the same cartoon. He said, he said, they brought DNA machine to our church. You, all the women ran away, carried their children, including the pastor's wife. <laughs> <laughs> you are laughing. Why are they? Why are they? And some of you had the other one the other day about a man who is who have been married for 50 years. Married for 50 years only to discover that all the children, none of them came from him. And these are already men, 30, so 30 years plus. Brethren, listen to me. You must have the identity of your father. Something happened in my house. Let me talk about myself so that nobody here gets angry. One of my children, or one or two of them, every day they take bread, they drink tea, they say they drink Gary. I say leave them. They, 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 it came from somewhere. Somebody say it came from somewhere. <laughs> it, came, it, it came from where? Somewhere. And I think I should know. Muanguru Gare first class. I can matakwa bread. I am I am tea. And I have not died, so they won't die. Is somebody hearing me here? So please, look at very well. You, it's there. Listen, let me tell you. There are, each, there are matters, including causes. They travel through the blood. Through the bloodline. Have you looked at the way? They, do you know that polygamy is a spirit? If your father was a polygamist, I don't care whether you are bishop or archbishop. I don't care whether they ordained you 20 times. If you don't deal with it, it will disgrace you. Let me tell you a story very quickly. A pastor, an anointed man of God, very powerful teacher of the world. In fact, a, a Bible expositor. One day, he had an immoral relationship, not with any of the beautiful young girls in the church. But guess who he had a, a, a immorality with? The wife of the uh, deputy, uh, sorry, of the super, uh, district superintendent of their church. An old woman, the wife of the district superintendent, a young man of about 30 something years. What is he doing with this old man, old woman? You know what it takes, how, how long it takes? And of course, the superintendent couldn't take it, the church council met, and at the end of the day, they excommunicated him. When his case came up for deliverance in the process of questioning him, they realized that the father had a moral relationship with the wife of the king of their town and was banished from the town. In the area where he was banished, he had a moral relationship. Sorry, he gave back to our brother. Foundation. You are still arguing. You better address your problem. Stay here and be arguing. Quote scripture. And I tell you, it's a question of time. This thing will embarrass you or frustrate you. To frustrate you. These things are not ordinary. Foundation is beginning. And that's why I did all the illustrations. Even, let me tell you, I said something here that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the man do? And I also told you that this foundation talks about beginning. I told you also that Abraham went to look for a city whose maker and builder was God. And the foundations were laid by God. But I want to want to make sure you understand that <laughs> something happened somewhere someday. How did these foundations go out of place? Number one. Take for instance, some of the places your houses are. Look at, I'm now talking to you, face to face. Some of you, the house where you are living now in the village, it has been painted. It has beautiful uh, tarazzo or tile with uh, what do you call the other one? Huh? Alumacus. Air condition. But I want to tell you if you look at some of those foundations you will see all kinds of spirits. Ugly demons. Why? You didn't deal with what is on the ground before you built. You pulled down the old ancient house. Did you ever take time to find out 
how those ancient buildings were laid. Huh? I want to tell you, Habakkuk chapter 2, what is in verse 12. Habakkuk chapter 2. Bible says, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. In Catan, there can be family, can be city. And establish a city between, with iniquity. Look up. Ha, look up. In those days, I am a, a little researcher. Not too much, but a little. I had to ask questions in the olden days. I want to inform you that many of them, they never built a house, no matter how simple it was, without the elders coming to bless the land. And how did they bless the land? Number one, when they come, the, the elders will sit around. These are the senior witches in the compound. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? And then they will bring pan wine to them. Or they bring the snap. And don't forget, Hosea, the Bible tells us that the land shall hear oil. And the land shall hear wine. So wine has a voice. <clears throat> so the hidden know what they are doing. is the Christian who don't understand. They be, number one, they will now ask you to bring one goat, which all of you here know, we call a foundation. They will kill the goat to lay the foundation of the land. Today, many of our towns have gone ahead of us because Satan is always researching. What they do is that immediately they give you land in the village, in the family, you kill the goat. And then the land becomes your own. And until you kill the goat, the land is not your own. So number one, when you kill the goat, you have already poured spilled blood upon the land. Woe to him that builds and plot. Evil foundation. Is somebody hearing me here? We are to rebuild the desolate foundations. Simple. And so, number one, the Bible says blood defiles the land. So the land has been defiled from day one, even if it is foul. Once they spill the blood on the ground, they defy the land. The presence of God withdraws. Darkness comes over the place. Then they pour wine on the ground when they finish eating. And they begin to call all the spirits in your father's, in your town to begin to come and call all the idols that they should come. In fact, one particular wedding, one particular marriage uh, by Edegwechi uh, was asked to go and watch he got to a point, nobody told him to leave that marriage and enter his car and come back. <coughs> Why? The elders called all the idols in Onisha. And the same man at a point said, well, if we continue, even if, if all of them come, that this place, this thing will not be enough for them. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is how terrible these things can be. So they continue inviting these spirits. And when they invite them, all of them now are, back, are pack, packaged in the foundation. And you wonder why sometimes when you close the door, the doors will open by themselves. When you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, what is in verse 20? But I say unto you that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. Did you hear? And I will know that you have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devil, libation, drinking with the devil, with the ancestral spirits. Ye cannot be partaker of the Lord's table, holy communion, and the table of the devils. And yet, tomorrow, even this Christmas, some of you, after they pour libations, and then they bring the, bring the ricola, bring everything, you join and chop. I ask you, you say the one you chop, you didn't chop the color, you chop the afofa. All of them we are blessed, demonically blessed, by the most senior witch. I'm not saying all of them are witches anyway. Some of them are genuine elders. But the ones these libations are poor, it is, it is a new wine, an old wine skin. It's a con it becomes a concussion. Amen. Now, go to the book of Exodus chapter 20, 34. We will soon go to prayer because this is part one. Foundation. Let's go to the book of uh, Exodus 34 verse 12. 
Israelites were coming back to the promised land. And as they were headed towards Moab, which is, you know that Moab caused Israel the greatest population of human beings. From the time they left Egypt till they got to the promised land, they didn't lose people like they lost in Moab. Why? Because of Balaam. Balaam did not cause them, but he gave an advice that may God slaughter 14,000 Israelis. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. God had warned them. Don't make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Don't go to their new young festival. Don't attend their hedonic festival. God warned them from day one. When Balaam was asked to come and curse them, Balaam got there. God stopped him from cursing them. But before he left, he said, come, let me give you an advice. You see these people? They are covenant people. If you want to do your traditional festival, get your beautiful young, young girls, eh? invite them to your traditional festivals. When they come, this same God covering them now will slaughter them. And they took the advice. And sent out their beautiful uh, uh, long-legged girls. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me here? The young, young ones. They went after the Israelites. Invited them to their festival. Israel came. And got themselves into Baal Poa. I thought somebody is hearing me here. God came down. Slaughtered 14,000 in one day. The greatest slaughter. Is somebody listening to me here? You know, today, many of us will not read the Bible. And yet, we continue to gamble from one unbeliever, hidden, or caught. And we pretend we don't know what we are causing. You are causing serious spiritual confusion. The Bible says that the unbelieving man is sanctified by the believing wife. It's a spiritual marriage. Any sexual relationship with such a hedonic and demonic man you are bringing the divine cover to him. And you will say, no, I want one. You know, hey, 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 listen to me, that your one was a confusion. That's why some of you, when they come, I ask them, have you ever slept with a, a, a Muslim? A prayer house prophet, native doctor. Your case, uh, it's better you confess it because you know what? You have to be sorted out. Because there is a spiritual confusion. You have never asked. Why? Go and check many of the great politicians in this country. Even those of them that are, um, that are Muslim, their wives are Christians, pastors. You think they are not wiser than you? Even the leader of, the, of, the, of some cults in this country. You ask yourself, why, why did they, what's going on? They know what you don't know. Are we sitting together? Hello? Brethren, listen to me. Foundation speaks. Now, there are in our families, when you read this scripture very well, take heed, least thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Where you go, least it become for you a snare, a trap. A snare means a trap. So, unholy covenants are traps. They are traps. When you as a Christian go to consult a native doctor, you have walked into a trap with your leg. When they give you charms, you have walked into a trap. And now you are a Christian. You need to mourn. You need to repent properly. You need to renounce it. You need to go for deliverance from the spirits you have invited into your own life. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody listening? Now, in our foundation, one thing we must deal with very well this morning, because there are people, please remind me, there are, we must deal with sacrifice before we leave here. There is a fresh sacrifice done somewhere against somebody in this meeting today. And we need to address that one. First thing, so that I don't forget, is somebody hearing me here? Hello? In our foundation, there are things we call ancient charms. Ancient charms. Some of us, our mother brought. He knew that our father was married and had, two, had already bo a boys and girls. Your mother agreed to come and be the first, third, five wife. They don't come 
empty handed. If their father does not prepare them, their mother will prepare them or they themselves prepare. Because they know they are going for war. They are prepared. And today, nobody, nobody is told about those charms. Your mother or your father, when he was alive, he was sacrificing some, doing some yearly or, you know, a particular quarterly sacrifice to the spirits. Today, nobody is doing anything for the spirits. Those are the reasons for the forwarding and backwardings of family. These are the charms responsible for some of the premature deaths. I thought somebody is listening to me. Some of them were charms the man put in his house to protect his children, the wife and children. Some of them, they, pro, they listen, any man who was a hunter, I have too many things on my head that I don't know the ones to leave. Is somebody hearing me here? Any man who is a native doctor, a, a, a hunter, I want you to understand what hunter means those days. A hunter is a man that will travel three, five villages sometimes, far out, hunting for animals, roasting them, carrying them in his bag. After about one week or more, he comes back home. And during the time, he'll be coming with the, with the animals hanged on all the bicycle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That man, number one, has some charms to make sure that the wives and children are protected in his absence. Today, they have become ancient charms. The house is fortified with spiritual watchmen who look after his house. You can't come into his house because he's a strong man and touch any of his wife. You will not go. You can even remain on top of the wife until he comes back. No, I'm telling you things. Go and ask questions. If you have not asked, these are things that were happening. Nobody dare touch them, no matter how many hours. Unless somebody else that is another principality. Now, these are ancient Charms today. Some of those charms, he used it to fortify his house so that one particular brother in this town, all kinds of things were happening in that family. All his brothers, none of them except him, who eventually got born again. All of them, there was none that was a Christian. The other one was a native doctor. Why die in silence was on his signboard. The other one was an occult. The other one belonged to a different occult group. The other one was a prayer house prophet. Satan comes to those families to recruit workers. Because satanic anointing is already in their blood. I thought somebody said hearing me here. So this brother, the day he invited us, I preached for almost two and a half hours because of the trouble in that family. I was preaching till late in the night. And there was an old woman in his early 90s that was in the family. Every other young people, all other people have died. And that woman, when I finished, I wanted her to go into repentance because the mood was good for repentance. And the woman said she has something to say. I told her it was not my pattern. When we finish prayer, then she would do repent. We can hear her. The woman said, an old woman, quietly, it's better in Igbo. It's better she talks because it may help the prayers. I said, okay. I decided to break protocol. I said, talk. The woman said, when she was a young girl, because she was not mar never married, when she was a young girl, she was a darling of the father. He said, every time the father wanted to go out, he would walk to one side and corner of the family and go there and stand. And utter some words. After some time, the man will move away out of the gates. He said, when the father is coming back from the where he went, he will go again to that corner of the family and stand again. After a long time, the man will enter his house. So the lady said, he asked the father, why do you always, what is there? And why do you always go there? The father said, no, my daughter, that information is not for you. Over time, she kept troubling the father. One day, the father opened up to her on one condition that she would keep the secret secret. And which she did. Because the father loved her, knows that she can keep any secret of the father. The father said to her, 
truly, I buried the head of three men there. And it, they use it to prepare a charm for him. Whenever he is going out, he stands upon their head to fortify himself because he's going to meet some strong men outside. And he said, when he's coming back, he knows he has been tried and he has lost some powers. He goes back there to strengthen himself again to sit in his house and wait for another one, another person who may come. Challenge. Did you hear? I want you to imagine how those people cried when they, before they were killed. I want you to think how they cost some of their families is a curse that is responsible for their children never at a particular age they die. I was listening to uh, the past, uh, Dr. Lukoya, one of his tapes, and he was sharing about a particular family. In this family, once any of them have a dream of seeing a man carrying a corpse, seven days from that day he dies. And they were dying. They were dying. Bam, seven days. Anybody that has that dream, seven days he must die. Until one woman, the husband had it, and the woman refused. Cried and ran to them. And they prayed. In the course of the prayer, it was discovered that their grandfather was buried with seven human beings. And when these people were being buried, were being buried they were raining curses. And they said things that their children would never be able to see glory and they would die prematurely as they have been killed. Today, these curses are working. And you are here. When they ask you to pray, you are waiting for, receive. You are not well. Old. The Bible says, this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You need to mourn. You need to imagine how that person cried. He cried to the Almighty who said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Today, God is keeping his word. He's keeping his word. It's a promise he made to them. If I tell you what happened in my own father's compound, I was told about a particular, you know, one of my uncles opened up to me and was sharing me one of the things, mysteries happened in the family that many of our people, many of the members of the family don't know. He said in the ancient time, there were four in the whole town, fear. And you can't even sell a slave without getting their clearance because they were the principalities. And our grandfather was one of them. Our grandfather was one of them. And so this man got a permission from them and was to go and sell a, ch a child in another village. And he did. They bought this child. And this child kept crying. They said he broke the pot, this local pot, carried the pebbles. He would look at the sun. He would throw. He looked into the shrine. He was cursing and crying as he was going. In my place, that pot, is, local pot, is used to represent an altar called a fan maker. On one, on one lazy. Uh -huh. And listen to me. This guy cried, wept, and they sold him. In the place where they sold him, they tied him like a goat. Waiting that. And the man knew they are watching them, preparing for the burial of another man, knowing that at the end of this burial, his head will go inside here. How do you think that person felt? You see, many of us don't sit down and imagine what happened. We don't. We don't. Blood created by God is not ordinary. Blood is a mystery. You can never shed human blood and be normal. No. No matter how you pretend. Some of them may not tell you the nightmares. Some of them don't tell you the daymares. What they go through because of it. And that same thing is what is happening in their families and their children today. They are suffering. I want to stop here. Tomorrow we we'll continue from where we stopped. We we'll continue with part two. But like I said, what are we supposed to do? Number one, we need to start from Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a prophet of God. Listen, Bible, he was a prophet of God. He had no problem with God. But the Bible tells me in chapter one, verse five down to six, the Bible said that he started to cry and mourn before God concerning the iniquity of the fathers. And he said, I am my father's house. We have sinned against you. He said, have mercy on me. 
I'm not in support of their wickedness. Even Jesus said, your fathers kill the prophets and you build the sepulchers. How? Some of us glory in our fathers. Ah, my father. Ah, they say my father was a strong man. Ah, listen to me. Don't glory over a wicked man. If you don't know what to say, quiet. Be quiet and just listen. When you know your father was not a, 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 he was not a Christian, I'm not saying that all of them that were not Christian were wicked. But when you know, hey, they tell you your father was a strong man, how do you think he became a strong man in the midst of mystical and strong wicked men? He himself was a principality to be a strong man. He costs a lot of things, sacrifices, charms to be a strong man. And those are the problems you are going through today. Can you bow your head and begin to, first of all, ask God for mercy. The greatest prayer we need is mercy. The greatest prayer is mercy. The greatest prayer is mercy. And then after we begin to re renounce the powers, the forces that they use. Talk to God. Tell him, I'm not in support of this wickedness. Lord, I'm sorry. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jesus, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jesus, I am sorry, Lord. 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 Jesus, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am. Sorry, Lord. I want you to begin to do repentance. Begin to ask God genuinely for mercy. For mercy. For mercy. For mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. I repent on behalf of my family for the sin of wickedness. We oppress widows. Lord, I'm sorry. The sin of bloodshed. I repent on behalf of my family for the sin of bloodshed. The sin of idolatry. Honor that was due to you, we gave to God that are no gods. Lord, I am sorry. Please forgive me. I repent of the sin, O oh God, of ritual murder, human sacrifices, abortions, Intertribal wars, the sin of idolatry, the sin of giving honor to gods that are no gods, the sin of ancestral worship. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for forgiveness. The sin of tradition and culture, the sin of immorality, pouring of libations, maltreatment of widows. maltreatment of widows. Lord, I'm sorry. We repent to God of the sin of pouring of libations, the sin of occultism, the sin of witchcraft, magic, sorcery. Believe in stars. The sin of consulting idioms. Lord, I repent of the sin of reincarnation. Believe in the second coming of human beings. The sin of blood covenants with Satan. Incisions all over my body. We repent of the sin of fornication, adultery, prostitution. The sin of lesbianism, homosexuality, bestiality, masturbation. Repent. 
the sin of slave trade. Human beings were sold as object of merchandise. I'm sorry, oh Lord, Lord, for all the ways I have defied my body, which is your temple, which is my body. I repent of the sin of polygamy, the sin of divorce done in my family. I repent of the sin of illegitimate births in my family. I repent of the sin, oh God, of slave trade. We sold human beings as objects of merchandise. Please go ahead, do proper repentance. Because I, the, the healing, healing anointing have entered here now just by repentance. We sold human beings as if we are selling packets of matches. I repent of the sin of false religion. Every way we have been involved in perverse religion. Lord, I'm sorry. I repent of the sin of shifting of landmark. Taking people's land. Sometimes our fathers kill them to take their property. Today, even some of their children are doing worse things. The sin of oppression of the poor, oppression of the widow, oppression of strangers, oppression of orphans. Their Lord, their God is mighty and will plead their cause, the Bible warns. The sin of withholding people's wages. Withholding people's entitlement. When anybody works for you, pay him. Pay him his debt, his salary. Don't withhold. We repent of the sin of wickedness. Hatred. Malice. Envy and strife. sin of strife false accusation other works of the flesh alcoholism some of you here even you still drink sins of alcoholism addiction addiction drug Some we are here still practicing and still in cults. The sin of dishonoring parents. Nabara is in Bara. Namebe, Daddy Bara. Is in Bara and Nambara, Namene, he woke Daddy Bara, is a Bara Nambara, Namene, he woke Daddy Bara. You are here. You are not even born again. You have not given your life to Christ. It is true. You may be coming to church or coming to this fellowship. But you have never given your life to Jesus. Before we go to the next stage, can you please stand up quietly and walk down to this altar? And we will lead you to Christ before we go to the next stage. Otherwise, you may miss out. God bless you. Any other person? Any other person fast? 
Namara Name me anybody else? Dadi Bara. I want you to really go into repentance. A great deal of this problem is solved by genuine repentance. Then renunciation. Any other person? Any other person? I want to give my life to Jesus. The first stage. First thing first. Nabara is the bara. Name me Please, if you are coming, come fast because we will soon pray. Anybody else? Please come, come, come. We want to pray. Pastor CJ. in this meeting, you are having problem at the center of your palm, right palm. If you are, can you wave your hand? Let me be sure. You are? Okay. Father, I don't understand. But you know. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody else, you have a problem here. At the back of your left hip. Left side of your hip. There is pain on the boat, but it is more prominent on the left hip. Can you wave your hand? Let me be sure. Yes, God bless you. It's okay. Many of you there. 
Man limbo dorobo sekete le bramaka en kabo laba kama kama temo sekete leba en kemo lebo kakabuta kasakata. Father, we take authority over the spirit and let the energy of God, the power of the Holy Ghost, flow into that heap now and give you healing in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, everybody. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. your family line. Evil family covenant, evil dedications, any of all vows, promises made to useless spirits speaking over your life. I renounce them. I renounce all the block, all the ancient covenant, all the covenant with idol spirits, ancestral spirits, familiar spirits of my family, the dedication, the promise of service made to these three spirits. I want you to begin to renounce them. Family covenants, evil family dedications, evil family initiations, foundational witchcraft, the vows and promises of service made to strange spirits. Do not part 
gets me back the family. Renounce them. Reject them. Break their hold over your life. Over your destiny. Ancient charms. Begin to renounce the family idols. Family idols. Kindred idols. Covenants with the family idols. Destroy, renounce their idols, break their controlling powers, break their controlling forces over your life, over your destiny. Your name, the one for the wake, one for Wosu, all satanic and hedonic names begin to destroy the negative influences of the name you answer over your life. Wabu, Wosu, Wanyao. Wake Wangu
command the Lord to flush all satanic deposit. In the name of Jesus. I want us to take this song together. There is a way that song ministered to my spirit. And I just hope everybody know how to sing it. Sing that song again. enough prayer. We are going to raid your father's compound. We are going to bind principalities and powers over your family. I want you to bind the ancestral spirits, the familiar spirits of your father's house. Pray their controlling powers and influences over your life and destiny. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority. I take authority. Over the principalities and powers. Over the principalities and powers. Of my father's compound. Of my father's compound. I bind the ancestral spirits. I bind the ancestral spirits. The familiar spirits. The familiar spirits. The marine spirits. The marine spirits. The occult spirits. The occult spirits. Of my father's house. Of my father's house. I break their power. I break their power. I break their influence. I break their influence. Over my life. Over my life. Over my destiny. Over my destiny. Over my marriage. Over my marriage. Over my health. Over my health. Over my finances. Over my finances. In the name of Jesus. Your mother begin to pray. My father, my father. 
Et il a donné en deux ans. Mais il a donné deux ans. Il s'est contenté. On va faire ce mal On va pas voir ça. On va te sommer. On va pas dans ça. On va pas dans ça. I get my life I pray to the power, the authority power, the yes. Over my life, my destiny, my career, my marriage. I pray to the author, the power, the influence, the control. Over my life, my destiny, my glory, my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over the authority power. I take authority over the author. I take authority over the spirit. Over the time, over my life. I just did it. My brother did My princess did I bought it. 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 By fire. 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 I just did I just did I just did That's what I did for. 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 I bind the power of the Holy Spirit. The witchcraft. I destroy the spirit. I destroy the power. I I I control it. I I I I. The influences. Voices of the familiar spirits, all negative voices of the ancestral spirits. Let me tell you something. There are voices coming from the different wicked graveyards in our father's compound. Did you hear what I said? Many of these graveyards are witchcraft altars that are affecting our lives, and we may not know. Some of them we are buried with their charms. Nobody was ready to touch them, even those of them. Some of them who we are not carrying their charms on their waist. Listen to me. Some of them we are so satanically anointed that their bones are seen releasing clouds of fire over the family. After all, the bone Elisha, Elisha raised the dead. So we are going to pray. Father, all negative voices from my father's compound, from my mother's compound, from the graveyards, from the familiar spirits that are affecting my life negatively. Mm. Let them be destroyed in the name of Jesus, mm. by the blood of Jesus. Mm. Open your mouth and begin ay, to ay, pray. Ay, 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 ay. My father, my father, in the name of Jesus, by the blood oh, of Jesus, no. I command uh, all by negative the voices, oh Lord, by the mighty presence, all negative, all negative voices, voices. Oh Lord, my oh, God, God. Ay, 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 oh, of a mean spirit, a wicked spirit, of a sister spirit, of a mean spirit, of a man, of my destiny, of my career. I buy the man, but the sword, I the sword, on the other places, a wicked God, I go there, of my father's side, of a man, but the sword, I buy the 
The voices of the grave from the graveyard will silence the name of the voice from the graveyard, from the family from the ancestors, from the ancient church, in my father's compound, from my mother's compound, in the name of Jesus. I bought that this one. All negative voices. Our family spirit. Our family spirit. Our pastor spirit. Our family spirit. Fight the story. All negative voices. All negative voices. All negative voices. All negative voices. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So many things are happening already. I want to tell you that um, Amen. 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 Can I tell you, so many things are happening. When we started dealing with the family First prayer, repentance prayer, before the second and this last one. Somebody in this meeting, you have a problem, a pain on your left breast. God started healing that matter. It's a voice from your family. Amen. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, so, we are going to take another prayer. And you know this prayer, I want you to pray. These are destiny matters. Listen, some of us, there are some evil patterns in our families. These evil patterns run through the bloodline. We are going to deal with it. You are going to cut it off. Somebody you see or say, the sister had breast cancer and died. The mother had breast cancer and died. This one, all of them, that thing is a curse. It's going through the bloodline. And we need to break it now. Are we ready to pray? Yes, sir. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All evil patterns. All evil patterns. Through my the bloodline of my family. The bloodline of my parents. The bloodline of my parents. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Evil pattern of poverty. Evil pattern of hindrances. Pata 
is a spirit. Never could be confused about it. It's a spirit and it is a dribbler. We are going to deal with the spirit of foundational polygamy spirit and witchcraft in your family. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All problem in my life all problem in my life that came through foundational witchcraft and polygamy that came through foundational witchcraft and polygamy be destroyed in the name of Jesus open your mouth and begin to pray my father, my father in the name of Jesus every problem in my life that came through witchcraft and polygamy be destroyed by fire be destroyed by fire be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus Every 
collapsing Amen. our stories are changing Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. is somebody hearing me here yes, sir. we are going to deal with foundational blockages hindrances against on the way to our greatness on the way of our breakthrough we are praying for a brother in fact let me tell you myself some years ago a man of God was praying for me and God opened his eyes and he said I see blockages roadblocks, roadblocks, roadblocks and he said he began to ask God what do I do? He said cross him over we need to cross you over 
Many of you, we need to cross you now. Over. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All foundational hindrances. All foundational hindrances. All foundational blockages. All foundational blockages. Against my greatness. Against my greatness. Against my breakthrough. Against my breakthrough. Against my finances. Against my finances. Be blasted in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My father, my father. Foundational hindrances. All foundational blockages. All foundational blockages. All of my God. I cast. All of my God. Ay, 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 by the blood of Jesus, I am I I shoot a book You're my Blockages, all foundational hindrances on our way to greatness. Let them be shattered in the name of Jesus. Let them be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Kahamara nibuchi, Kahamara nibuchi, Setia Kagenaro. Kamara ni buchi, kamara ni buchi, kamara ni buchi. Everybody now. Yeah, yeah. Setia kage na daro, kamara ni buchi.
Jesus, clap for Jesus, clap for him, clap for him. I nearly forgot, even though I was reminded. I wonder if there is something God showed me this morning, early hours of this morning. Any sacrifice done anywhere against you or anybody in this hall, in this meeting, in fact, the, blood, the animal that was slaughtered in that sacrifice, a pig, is not yet dead completely. I hope you are hearing me. Let the ritual and whatever it was meant for, we destroy it here now. Amen. Open your mouth. Everybody begin to pray. Amen.
the name of Jesus. You can clap for Jesus, you know. From the altar of God, by the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we nullify the speaking of that sacrifice. We destroy the ritual. We revoke and reverse the words of the satanic priest. He shall not stand at the Lord liberty. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody in this meeting, you are having all kinds of pain at the back. All kinds of pain, particularly around your scapula. All over the whole of this back. Can you wave your hand if you are having that problem here? One, two, Jesus. Okay, no wonder. Because I wanted to jump this matter. Father, let your mighty hand rest upon these ones. Let their healing power flow into them. Whatever need to be aligned properly, let it be aligned properly. Amen. Let nerves align with the nerves. Amen. Let the ligaments align with the ligaments. Amen. Let the tendons align with the tendons. Amen. Let the power and the energy of the Holy Ghost flow into you and force out every ability of darkness. Amen. Any spell is nullified. Amen. And anybody that is sick here, we bind the spirit of sickness and infirmity. We bind the spirit of sickness and infirmity. We command healing upon your life. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread. For by his stripes we are healed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody you are in this meeting. I don't know what is wrong with your right ankle. Right ankle. Around your right ankle, you are having problem. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command healing. Amen. We command healing. Amen. Concerning the works of my hand, command me. We command healing. Amen. May the angel go and write what needs to be written in that ankle. Amen. Now, in the name of Jesus. Somebody in this meeting, when you came in here, you were having problem in your heart. Heart. But I want to tell you that about 15 minutes ago, God healed you. Yeah, yeah because I didn't want to stop the prayer session then. I didn't want to interrupt the flow. There are many other things. As the Lord healed you, I want to encourage you, don't be like the nine who didn't go to share their testimony. Glorify God. Don't touch his glory. Give him that honor. The meeting we had today is very important in changing destinies. A lot of things have changed here and will change because we will, by tomorrow we will explode again. Somebody say explode. Explode. Let's begin to close our eyes and begin to thank God for today. Thank him. Appreciate what he has done for us. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the open doors. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. God bless you.